We have a geomagnetic unrest today. Now, can humans feel the changes in geomagnetism? Yes, they can. We've uploaded various videos on this based on scientific research. Here we are on the Space Weather site. And uh, geomagnetic unrest today, Earth is entering a stream of high-speed solar wind. The gaseous material flowing from the minor hole in the sun's atmosphere. Full-fledged geomagnetic storms are unlikely, but geomagnetic unrest and Arctic auroras are likely March 28th, today. And uh, here we are. Look at that. How beautiful and strong that is. That's pretty much north of Montreal, and it's at the border of the United States. And this looks to me it was stronger than it was yesterday. Brain waves responds to magnetic fields. Wow. 11 seconds. Let's go. This is uh, the test of electric induction mechanism of magnetoreceptor. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this. Amazing. And the red, of course, is yeah. Okay. So we know that because we uploaded a video a couple of days ago based on scientific research by physicians and physicists. And uh, yes, the not only that, it has to do with the uh, Schumann residence of the Earth. They found that people are also susceptible to Earth's uh, electromagnetic field. Not only the uh, solar storms that come in, but also the Earth's pulse affects humans. That's why the doctor said, for example, when you go out to the country and you go out for nature walks and uh, you're in your beautiful environment of sur natural surroundings where the Schumann residence is more normal, you feel that and you feel healthier, you feel better. Whereas if you're in a, uh, an urban environment with, a, for example, a big city, where the pulse is a lot higher, the frequency is a lot higher, you're going to feel unease and unrest. Uh, so we have a connection with the Earth's pulse. They find that it's very similar to it, the human pulse, the human uh, frequency. And we also feel what's coming in from the sun. Every time we have unrest, solar, uh, solar flares, solar activity, and... Um, an impulse, a pulse of uh, a solar, a star, explo star explosion, of course. The, we're talking about the solar flare, the CME. You have uh, headaches, you can feel unease, you can feel uh, depression, uh, uneasiness. And uh, with all this activity that we've had in the past few days, uh, a lot of my viewers have left comments that they did feel that. And, uh, of course, it has to do with the sensitivity to the electromagnetic field changes. So obviously they're sensitive to that, and they did feel that. Now, um, the solar wind is at 395.5 kilometers per second. X-ray solar flares, 6-hour max from hole AO01747. Uh, as today, and uh, in the next 24 hours, again, AO0147. So, uh, now, the geomagnetic unrest today, Earth is entering the stream of high-speed solar wind, gaseous materials flowing from a minor hole in the sun's atmosphere. Full-fledged geomagnetic storms are unlikely, but geomagnetic unrest and Arctic auroras likely today, as the Earth moves deeper into the stream. Now, can humans sense magnetic storms? Well, I already gave the answer to that. The evidence uh, the proof is that yes they can animals as well and also humans it says here close your eyes and relax daydream about something pleasant in this state your brain is filled with alpha waves a type of electrical brain wave associated with wakeful relaxation now try it during a geomagnetic storm it may not be so easy a new study just published in the journal eNeuro by researchers at Caltech offers convincing evidence that changes in Earth's magnetic field can suppress alpha waves in the human brain. You see, it can suppress the alpha waves, meaning that it makes you more anxious and stressed. 
Now this is a Faraday cage, it's a special container that keeps out uh, the effects of solar radiation. And for example, you could put in your electrical appliances in there and they'll be kept safe. So this is a Faraday cage, Merit coils, acoustic panels, non-magnetic chair, isolated floor, EEG machine. They've got them hooked up to an EEG machine to see what happens. Researchers have long known that living creatures can sense magnetic fields. For instance, honeybees, salmons, turtles, birds, whales, and bats use the geomagnetic field to help them navigate, and dogs can be trained to locate buried magnets. And now, quote, many animals can do it, so why not us, end quote, asks Coney Wang, Caltech graduate student and lead author of the eNeuro study. Now to find out, this is nothing new, I mean this was the, the, the videos that I posted were done about uh, I think 10-12 years ago they came up with this uh, conclusion. Okay, let's go back to what uh, Connie Wang did at Caltech. It says to find out if humans can indeed sense magnetic fields, the researchers built an isolated radio frequency shielded chamber where the participants sat in utter darkness for an hour. As magnetic fields shifted silently around the chamber, participants' brain waves were measured using electrodes positioned at 64 locations on their heads. So this is it here, the EEG machine. Um, in some of the 34 participants, alpha brain waves decreased in power by as much as 60% in response to the shifting fields. Additional runs of the experiment showed that the effect was reproducible, so it happened in others as well. The study co-authors Joseph Kirchfink and Shin Shimojo say that this is the first time concrete evidence of the new human sense magnetoreception. Remarkably, participants who experienced the changes reported no awareness of them. It appears to be a completely unconscious effect, never rising to the level of a conscious interruption. This led the researchers to suggest it may be vestigial and some remnants of an ancient ability to navigate using local magnetic cues. Kirchwink said, It's perhaps not surprising that we might retain at least some functioning neuron components of magnetoreception, especially given the nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle of our not-too-distant ancestors. As a next step, we ought to try bringing this into conscious awareness. This is what Shimojo said. Now, does this mean people may be able to sense geomagnetic storms? It's unclear. Well, I believe, of course, they can. Even though it's unconscious, they do, they do feel them. Now, when solar storms hit the Earth, they cause our planet's magnetic field to shake, moving back and forth. Compass needles in mid-out latitudes can move by as much as four or five degrees. The Caltech study did not look at changes of that size. Magnetic fields inside the test chamber shifted by plus or minus 90 degrees. That's amazing. Much, much larger than a typical geomagnetic storm. As a result, we do not yet know if human magnetoreception is sensitive enough to detect the relatively subtle changes associated with space weather. Now, Kirchwink says the full extent of human magnetoreception remains to be discovered, so we have to stay tuned. Oh, look at this. They have they put up various things up in space, and then uh, they say, well, if you want them, this is how much they cost, and this is the love knot, and, <laughs> and you know that you had something that was up in space. This one is, again, uh, $179.95, just so that it's less than $180. Okay. <laughs> These are the fireballs uh, that uh, we had eight reported fireballs. It's amazing that they all come towards Earth. They don't go anywhere else. Do you see them going anywhere else? They all come towards Earth. They're in love with us, that's why. Something's going on there. And these are the near-Earth asteroids. For today, uh, there are 1,967 from what they've found so far. I'm sure there's others that they don't know are up there. Okay, potentially hazardous asteroids, PHAs, near-Earth objects. Are space rocks larger than approximately 100 meters that can come close to Earth at 0 0.05 AU, 1 AU is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. None of the P 
PHAs, potentially hazardous asteroids, is on collision course with our planet, although astronomers are finding new ones all the time. Okay, this is the one that's a uh, very short distance. Okay, that's already passed. That's already passed. Uh, so here we are. That was yesterday. And April 4th is the next one, but that's going to be a long ways off. No, not to worry. Not to worry. Unless there's a new ones that come in. So, cosmic rays in the atmosphere. We have developed a new predictive model of aviation radiation. It's called ERAD, short for Empirical Radiation Model. We're constantly flying radiation sensors on board airplanes over the U.S. and around the world. So far, collected over 22,000 GPS tagged radiation measurements. And using this unique data set, we can predict the dosage on any flight over the U.S. with an error of up to no worse than 15%. So these are the hot flights. Uh, White Plains to West Palm Beach has a lot. Look at that. Wow. Van Nunes to Teterboro, West Palm Beach, Teterboro. And then it keeps falling. For example, Los Angeles, New York, you get 61.2. New York, Chicago, 58, and then it keeps falling. So yeah, you, you do get a lot of ro dosage radiation when flying. And to measure radiation on airplanes, we use the same sensors we fly to the stratosphere on board Earth to sky, calculus cosmic ray balloons, neutron bubble chambers, and x-ray. Yeah, they did take neutron bubble chambers, and they found that, yeah, uh, a lot of these flights do have a lot of radiation. So I'll leave links below for you for this on space weather today. Oh, the cor yeah, the coronal holes today. There they are. Earth is inside the stream of solar wind flowing from this network of coronal holes. That's it. That's what's coming towards us. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.